Hello, I'm Sue Swinand. I'm standing in the greenhouse, uh, the tropical house at the Botanical Gardens of Wellesley College. Uh, I am an artist and uh, an art teacher. And today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Botanical Gardens and the greenhouses here, about some of the classes we do at Wellesley, and uh, also about a current exhibition I have in the visitor center next to the greenhouses. It's actually a wonderfully delightful place to spend an afternoon or to come and read a book. It's like a little bit of paradise, especially in winter, to be able to wander in here and watch the sun setting and see the snow falling. It's delightful. The greenhouses are quite extensive. They have um, a desert room, a water room with a little pond and goldfish. We're in the tropical room where they have bananas and coffee and all kinds of exotics. It's amazing, but every time I walk through here, I see something I've never seen before. So it's, it's that aha and that delight at looking at things and always being surprised at what's gonna be here from week to week, it changes. And actually, when you walk through the first time in the same day, you walk back and you see something you didn't see before. I've been teaching at the greenhouses for about 15 years now, and I have to say, I really do enjoy it. The people we have are uh, delightful and we get uh, a various People from all walks of life, all different ages, uh, some students, but usually people who are taking the class here for enrichment and uh, the pleasure of looking at things carefully. This is the desert room and uh, there are really some phenomenally weird things in here. There are quite a few greenhouses, well there's an orchid room also. You really need to come over and explore for, for an afternoon. I teach a painting class where people can or cannot, well, they can choose for themselves whether they are going to work in the greenhouse or whether they want to work in the studio or uh, work from something from their imaginations. So, but the, the beautiful part is that the greenhouses are here for inspiration. Now I'm standing in the visitor center uh, adjacent to the greenhouses at the Wellesley College Botanical Gardens. And uh, part of what we do here is we have exhibitions, usually monthly, or this exhibition that I'm uh, going to show you is my own work and it will be here through the end of November. Um, as I said, I teach a class here in the greenhouses, which is primarily uh, watercolor medium. This exhibition is uh, work that I have done. Most of it, it, it's drawings and paintings, but it is work that is primarily inspired by the natural world. And the forms that I find so fascinating are all out there in the greenhouses to be found. So all my life I've been looking at nature and the wonderful, amazing, things that it produces and when I make these paintings I'm really painting from my imagination. I don't do any drawing. I don't, well in the drawings of course, I, I don't do any pre-planning, let me say it that way. But I uh, sort of feel my way along and just use my imagination and I'm really looking at it to sort of access a more subconscious way of working and are really working from my memory of nature. So it's kind of like putting nature through the filter of my own self. So most of the forms in this painting, as you can see, are very organic. And by that, I mean something that might have been a shape or form made by nature. Uh, I do other kinds of work. I do some sculptural work. I do some printing work. I, I sort of do whatever the idea requires and follow my nose where it leads me. So I have fun trying all different kinds of materials, but I do show a lot of watercolor work. And uh, one of the things I'm trying to do with the watercolor medium is make it more physical, make it more visceral, make it more of a painting medium. Watercolor is a medium that, as most of you know who have done watercolor when you were a little kid probably, 
it's a very bodiless. It's just a colored water that you're spreading on the sheet. There's nothing there but that, which is what we love about it because the light goes through the color. And uh, that's one of the things everyone responds to is that transparent color. This is a series of uh, drawings that I did this summer and I uh, really enjoyed doing them and they're very meditative, you might say, because I can just sit and relax and I can sit outside and I just kind of uh, take the pen for a walk. I did these with mostly with ballpoint pen. So again, as I say, there's no planning in the beginning. It's just moving the pen and seeing what kind of shape you get and then how that might suggest some kind of form from nature. So um, I, I called the show Wild Things because uh, the plants seem to have a life of their own and a bit of a personality. I always like to get a little bit of humor into the work, but these were some pieces that I did during the summer. And as I say, they're very meditative because three or four hours could go by and I'm just sitting there making these little marks and filling up the space. The class I teach is more about painting with your imagination and more about making work that's expressive rather than concentrating on such a accurate photographic rendering of, of the plants, which is more in the area of the botanical classes. So I thought I might show you a couple little things and I also wanted to mention that the class is really uh, for students of every level. We have some students who are very experienced, accomplished painters, professionals, and we have other people who come just for the enrichment. And I like to think that the class is something that helps people to really learn how to see. We spend quite a bit of time uh, looking at what people have done and talking about it and what people have said is it really teaches them how to look at paintings and think about art and uh, it's a way of learning how to see. When I talk about doing a wash what we're talking about is spreading color. We, we mix the color into a solution and then we spread the color over the surface of the painting and we can let the color run down in a shape. So that would be a basic wash. And um, of course you make the color darker by putting more paint and less water. When this would be considered a mingled wash where we have two different temperatures, one orange and one going to red, but we're allowing them to mingle in the middle. Uh, and I'll show you, um, how, of course, that's quite simple to just take it. Well, let's do it right on the one we just did. If I run this color into that, I can let those, it's still wet, so they will run together. Actually, the whole thing is going to run together, so I'm just changing that color a little hotter. Um, and if I let this color run down, it will make, it'll all go smooth. So if I take a color a tra nice transparent color, and I spread that on top of this, you can see how the color underneath shines through. Now let's, let's tint that to a darker blue just for fun. But I mix the colors on my palette, I'm cooling that color off a little bit, and I'll pull that down even a little bit bluer so that that middle light section shows up. So this is what we would call taking away. So you can see how one layer is built up on another. The first layer is dry. I put a glaze on the second layer. And what I really made there was that shape. And it's very easy to use your brush to make lots of different shapes. So if I use the brush this way, I can I'm creating that negative. I'm creating a negative shape where the color is brighter and lighter. And I'm putting the dark, I have to turn it upside down to run the puddle the other way. But you can see how the color, I'm leaving that shape in the middle. So often people say to me, 
how do you get those crisp lines or how do you get um, you know such sharp edges the water does that if I and so let's make a big area of color here if I want to even out this wash I will respread the water because you'll see I'm getting all kinds of funny things going on there so I'm going to pull that water around and just re-wet that let's do some little details uh, now, do you see all that water lying at the bottom of the page? I'm going to take that and I'm going to run that down over the surface so that the water distributes itself equally. When you have a wash that is vulnerable like this, meaning very loose and very wet, if you drop a drop of water on it or another color, it will it can leave a white spot, depending on how wet it is. If it's extremely wet, like it is right here, the color will just blend together. Let's drop a little droplet of blue in there. But if I touch the paper there, it will, it will run and blend into the, to the other colors. I can do things like tap the brush to put random spots. So uh, I'm looking for ways to sort of make that wash more interesting, more physical. And as I say, if, if I drop a drop of water in that, let me see if I get a nice big, it's still a little bit wet, but you'll see that that will bleed out and make wonderful little patterns that seem very organic. So there are lots of fun things you can do with uh, the painting. When I uh, look at, here's a painting you might be able to see better because it doesn't have glass, but you can see that I've used crayons here to scratch over that. I've used little droplets of water here in this big wash and th what was underneath that pinkish color was yellow, so the droplet went back to a yellow color. Here's another area where I've used splattering. And then uh, sometimes I'll use crayons to activate a surface or uh, little pencils. And um, so again, it's not so much drawing, but it's sort of finding the shapes that is what I'm encouraging students to do, to think more from their imagination, even though we study the forms in the greenhouses. I'm just trying to show that while the wash is still wet, you can scrape to get a white line or you can scrape with a sharp tool to get a dark line, very, very fine dark lines. Uh, or you can scrape with your knife to get textures. These are all ways of getting texture in the uh, material. And it is true that trying to erase takes a little bit of the freshness away, but there are a lot of ways that you can compensate. And you need to be able to make corrections or you can't move forward sometimes. What you do is you take your brush, you wet it with clean water, and you push backward to the point. And you can then blot that area, and that's just called lifting. Let's do it on a darker passage. Now some colors are very staining and they won't lift as well. But most of the time you can lift off enough that you can make your correction. Or you can put a light thing back into a dark area. So I'm rubbing this out and I'm using the flat brush because that allows me to put a lot more energy onto that scrubber than you, a round brush would, which would only be using one little hair at the front. So um, you don't want to press too hard, but using clean water, I've changed that whole shape there. And sometimes you need to repaint the edge next to it so that it looks fresh after it dries. A lot of times I'll let that dry and then repaint this so it's fresh again, so the edge doesn't look rubbed. But that's just called lifting. So I just wanted to give you a little sample of uh, some of the uh, ways we move paint around. And 
Uh, if you'd like to see more of my work, I'd be delighted if you'd visit my website, www.swinand, S-W-I-N-A-N-D.com. Uh, and I hope to see you sometimes over at the greenhouse.